Welcome back to Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, and I'm Doug. Man, today we're just talking about some of the things that we learned after going through the bomb cyclone and this Arctic blast or polar shift or whatever the heck it was. Uh, we got a little bit warmer temperatures today, uh, but again, we got more cold temperatures coming by the weekend, even maybe some more snow. So in between this video and uh, a couple videos from now, I'm gonna be probably fixing one of the problems that we had uh, during this cold event. We were like negative 10, 12, 17 degrees. Um, and this lasted for like two weeks. So it's very unusual weather for our area. Um, our frost line is probably right around 24 or 30 ish inches. And all of our pipes and everything I put in at 36. So we do have, um, we did have one problem uh, with our pipes that I'm gonna have to fix. And I'm gonna have to be on this like while you guys are watching this video because I wanna get it up and running. We don't have any uh, water flowing to the cabin. We have a, in case you're new to our channel, we live off grid in a log cabin and uh, we built the cabin in 90 days. I built it solo. Stay tuned for a video coming out on that. And um, we have a gravity fed water system uh, that we collect rainwater off of our large barn up in the front and it gravity feeds down to our log cabin. So what happened was during this cold event, um, we had a little bit of problem in the room where I store the tanks and actually leave a video here that you guys can check out and reference. Um, but we were able to keep the tanks from freezing, uh, but we had a little bit of problem with one of the hydrants out in the yard. Um, it blew up for some reason. So we're gonna go right now over to the hydrant, kind of give a little look there, and then I'm gonna give you guys a tip that I learned from some of the old timers around here. So in case you have these lawn hydrants, um, if this was the problem, maybe you could avoid it for yourself. Uh, at your place. So we're gonna go check that out right now and kind of see how everything's uh, weathered. Uh, we're doing good on our wood supply. We have a couple of cords left. It's uh, middle of January roughly so there to uh, speak, but I have a big wood that I'm gonna be getting down a big tree uh, that's a dead tree. So it's FOD. If you guys watch our channel, here's a FOD video um, talking about food on demand, but we have another FOD on our homestead. It's firewood on demand. So if you can harvest a dead dead tree that's been standing uh, for uh, this one here in this case has been a couple years you can actually burn that wood right away and it should be pretty good with the moisture content so let's go over here by the hydrant take a look what's going on and I'm also going to give you guys this hydrant tip uh, if in case you have um, a homestead yourself now this right here is right next to the hydrant so this is a sure tell sign uh, that we have a problem at the base of this hydrant so on the other hydrant this is another hot nugget tip for you if you put these hydrants in even if you're on grid you'll want to put a shutoff valve right before the hydrant so that way if anything happens with the hydrant you can shut off the flow to the water and then maintain water anywhere else you want and then you can fix that when you need to for some reason I'm not sure why. I only put a hydrant on the other, or a shutoff valve on the other hydrant and not on this hydrant. So that's my bad. So when I dig this thing out, I'll be showing you guys how to put in a shutoff valve and then showing you um, exactly what exactly went wrong with this hydrant. These are freeze uh, proof or uh, hydrants they're not supposed to freeze and I know I'm down three feet so it'll be interesting to see what exactly happened down there so now I'm at the hydrant so what I did was um, when I put these hydrants in let me show you guys what's going on here it's kind of a bummer because I actually uh, have this covered over pretty good and I've already put in my rock and everything hold on I'm gonna have to get something to cut it all right, I'm back with my cutting apparatus. I actually made this knife with uh, Simple Little Life. I'll leave that video right there. I went to Canada and actually hand forged and made this knife from scratch. That was pretty cool. So Maggie wants to help me get this thing open. Watch out now. All right. So I'm gonna show you guys what I did here. I put a concrete pad around this hydrant. Uh, because at the time I was putting buckets down here and you know there was no rock or any landscaping here We didn't even have the, gar the garden area in yet. 
So I just thought it was just a little more convenient way for me to fill up the buckets. They weren't getting dirty at the bottom. And so I did that. But the tip I learned from the old timers is you never really want to put concrete around your hydrants because it transfers the cold into the hydrant. And I think that's what the problem is. So I'm also going to be busting these up and taking care of that. At the same time, I'm fixing this one. Now I also did that at my other hydrant and I'm actually going to bust that one up too and then just leave it dirt around the hydrant hydrants or if I want to I'll also put um, gravel around it uh, yeah, or maybe even this kind of rock now also one of you guys watching the videos left a comment and you guys said that sometimes if you actually put this concrete in you know and it's pretty good like these are floating right like I just did a real like just put a box around it and put it in there so it's not really gripped into the ground or it's not really professionally like a good pad but they said that the concrete will expand and contract and it'll actually pull the hydrant up out of the ground so thanks for that tip in the video uh, comment section uh, on a previous video. So the saga of the hydrant continues. What I'll be doing is putting that shutoff valve in there and then I'll be able to get water flowing back to the cabin. So stay tuned for that video. I'm gonna show you guys what happens when we dig into the ground and where the, um, you know, where the breach is, what happened, what's the problem? And then I'll be able to share that with you guys and hopefully you can learn from it. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I think actually for tomorrow's video, um, you guys might see some vegan bone broth, which is totally awesome. Stacy's gonna go through all the health benefits of that. And then um, I should be able to have uh, this part two video wrapped up and waiting for you guys. As always, thanks for watching. Oh, and I got some stuff to do in the greenhouse and we got a few more things to do in the garden uh, that we're gonna share with you guys. We already have our garlics in and all that stuff, but we got a little bit of maintenance to do out here, uh, spreading manure and whatnot, so it has time to kind of ferment into the ground through for the rest of winter and uh, we'll be getting ready to start using the greenhouse pretty soon as well. So I know you guys got the fever to get these stuff growing and all this good stuff. I see a lot of you guys posting on Instagram and stuff, you know, like with your little sprouts coming up and everything. The only thing I will caution you with is don't start too early because what happens is that stuff takes off and then you can't get it in the ground and it gets real spindly and then it ends up dying and not being a good producer for you. So make sure you're timing things right. I know you guys are getting excited out there. And don't forget we have a special guest that's coming up to the homestead on Friday and you'll see his video on Sunday. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a homestead homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will, will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.